and uh, it's a great uh, pleasure and also privilege uh, to give this webinar on this important day. Um, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Professor Tej Pratab Ji um, and uh, for his nice introduction and also a lot of practical things he talked and deep in uh, understanding and insights he has. Really enjoyed. Uh, also, I'd like to acknowledge uh, uh, Dr. S.K. Kashyap, uh, Dean College of Agriculture, Dr. Alaklanda Ashok, um, Dean College of Engineering, and Dr. Guru. And also, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Shiva Prashad and Professor Jyoti Prashad for organizing this webinar and for this opportunity. I'm able to share some of the things I've uh, been doing and thinking. So the topic of the webinar is Managing India's Inv Invisible Resource, the role of participatory groundwater monitoring and management at the village level. So the word village level is very important and the participatory uh, aspect. So, Groundwater and environment. Uh, so they are very much connected with each other. And also, as Professor uh, Tej Pratabji said, uh, uh, there is a biodiversity in the environment, and the groundwater is connected with the biodiversity as well. So, and the groundwater interacts with surface water, it's not a separate thing. Uh, groundwater is connected with river. So, for example, when there's no rains, the water in the river most likely is from groundwater, it's best flow. Similarly, uh, wetlands and lakes. Groundwater also is important for trees, deep rooted trees, uh, vegetation of all sorts. And so overall, it, it is very important for environment. Surface water versus groundwater, so we have we can see surface water, but groundwater is underground. And uh, because we can build dams, we can see the dams. Uh, so there has been more emphasis on ground, surface water and more investment by governments on surface water. Groundwater has been invisible. And also groundwater, the flow we can't control. It has its own natural flow. Uh, groundwater pumping is hard to monitor, control, and control in country like India, millions of bore wells and dug wells and so on. The problem of the groundwater is excessive use. So we are using more water than what is recharged. And it's a decentralized resource. So it's not uh, limited to one particular area, or, but it's everywhere. And so the investment has been uh, lower compared to surface water. So if we talk about the use of groundwater, about 60% of irrigated agriculture in India depends on groundwater. 80% of drinking water in rural areas comes from groundwater. More than 50% drinking water in urban areas and industrial water needs are from groundwater. Country like Denmark, nearly all water supply is groundwater. As Mexico City, Kabul, many other cities largely depend on groundwater. And uh, we have, we had green revolution in 1970s. And groundwater played a big role and that's how we achieved food security. But at the same time, it affected water security. And uh, if we go back, say 30, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, we didn't have pumps, so we relied on bullocks and uh, lifting water. And uh, what these bullocks used to do in a whole day, uh, when you could do in half an hour, that sort of pumping. So it changed the whole use of groundwater and the drilling, which uh, you can go as deep as you want, uh, 100 meter, 200 meter, 300 meters. And so we, we extracted 
too much water, groundwater. So this, we have challenge with groundwater. We often take it as for it for granted. So it's available. So we ignore because it's invisible. And we realize the problem when the well is dry or hand pump is not operating. Also, uh, there's a good chance we pollute groundwater through chemicals and through various uh, other things. And sometimes the quality is not suitable due to natural processes like too much fluoride in Rajasthan and many parts, other parts of India, fluoride is a problem. Arsenic is a problem. Uranium is a problem. And that can really affect uh, health and well-being of people. Or pumping can, over pumping can aggravate the situation. Also, it's a replenishable resource. So we need to balance the use and recharge. So groundwater, as I mentioned before, is an invisible resource. And when something is invisible, it's hard to communicate what is happening. And this one, this is one of the challenges with the groundwater science and management. So we understand many things, but groundwater being underground, how it flows, where it flows, still a lot of understanding we don't have. So it makes it very hard to manage as well. So the challenge is we need to balance. So at the moment we have more use than what is annually recharged. As I mentioned before, it's a replenishable resource. So if we don't replace back, then we have a problem. And that's what we are going through in India, in many other countries in the world. And in very simple terms, when I, we were doing this project, which I will describe, uh, groundwater challenge. So uh, one farmer said, it's like ATM machine. So uh, if we don't put water back as recharge, then if we take more water, then um, like ATM machine, the money won't come out. So groundwater is like that. So I'd like to share uh, some things we have done in last and uh, nine years in Rajasthan and Gujarat, it's a project called Marvi, managing aquifer recharge and sustaining groundwater use through village level intervention. The project uh, was funded by ACIR, Australian Center for International Agriculture Research, and Australian Water Partnership. And it has been running since 2012 and still continuing. So it has uh, nine partners. Uh, Western Sydney University is the lead partners with the Development Support Center, Aid Communities and Technology in Gujarat and MPUH in Rajasthan, Vidya Bhavan, Kishi Vigyan Kent, and in Australia, CSIRO, International Water Management Institute, Mekong Regions Futures Research, and Carnegie Mellon University. So these were the key partners, and many of them are still continuing. And we had total 30 researchers and 35 farmer researchers. And uh, Marvi project key activities, three, three aspects. So participatory data collection, sharing information and building understanding, and engaging with policymakers, government agencies, and groundwater users and other stakeholders. So there's a lot of uh, working with people and learning together. And this project was, uh, uh, conducted in two states, Rajasthan and Gujarat. So in Rajasthan in Udaipur district and Gujarat in Arawali districts. And both districts uh, are um, semi-arid and uh, groundwater is a big issue in those areas. So when we started this project, we had two options. Uh, option one was the data collection, modeling, and development of scenarios and recommendations. And so it's a lot of uh, some data collection working in the office and like that. And the other option was 
bring people together to own the problem. People monitor groundwater and learn together then develop their own science and strategies and ways to act together. So it's uh, working with the, at the grassroots level. And so option one was easier, but project would have ended long time ago. So the original project was for four years, but we are still continuing and there's another two, three years of funding uh, continuing. Option two was time consuming requiring patience, but has really led to actions by the community. Also work is ongoing and will get replicated in new areas across India. And the example is Atul Bhujal Yojana, Jal Shakti Ministry and World Bank just initiated this project uh, and we are working with them. So the Marvi approach, uh, so there are three elements, science of groundwater, community and government. And uh, often uh, the scientists work with the government uh, in terms of funding and working together, or sometimes government has some plan programs to work with the community, but all not working together. And that's what we tried to do in Marvi project. So we worked, we brought the community, the science, and the government stakeholders together. So well, who are the actors in the Marvi project? So uh, the researchers, uh, so both uh, uh, the traditional researchers like us and the farmers, we work together. And then we also engage with the schools and village communities, and then Gram Panchayat, state and central government agencies. And then we had BJs, Pujal, Jankars. I will explain a bit more about them. So the, these are the main actors in the project. So Marvi means local management of groundwater, improved livelihood, and groundwater sustainability. So there are three main elements. One is aquifer recharge. So understand recharge dynamics with rainfall and pumping. So what happens? And effective planning and design of recharge structures and performance of recharge structures. So understanding the whole recharge dynamics. And the other aspect is groundwater. So how much water is used, what crop to grow, and what irrigation methods to use. And the third one is village engagement and ownership. So involve farmers, school children, and other community members to monitor rainfall, water level, water quality, and so on and eventually lead to some sort of cooperation. So uh, this project really brought all these three elements together. So what, we, what did we really do in the Marvi project? So we trained Bujal Jankars and work with them on an ongoing basis, not just uh, uh, do the training and let them work, but uh, we really worked on daily or weekly basis with them. They collected groundwater level data, rainfall amounts, water quality, check dam water level, and, and also we collected socioeconomic data to understand what is happening, why it is happening, and so on. So these BJs collected this uh, groundwater data on a weekly basis, they collected rainfall data, and we worked with local schools and community to develop uh, their understanding and their support and worked with Gram Panchayat, state government agencies. And then we developed tools based on the data collection by villagers and uh, resources for data collection, analysis, and capacity building. And we also kept the uh, connection with the policymakers at the state and central government levels. So it was not, uh, the, the aim was to really make a difference uh, if we had option one, which is modeling and all that, uh, we would have collected lots of data, number, would have done a lot of number crunching and nice reports, graphs and tables, and easy to publish. But this was more trust disciplinary, means uh, going beyond focusing on the people and their needs, and the research is uh, done to help them. 
So these Bujal Jankars, we engaged these local volunteers. So they were uh, from primary school to high school pass, these volunteers. And uh, so we had 25 in Rajasthan, 10 in Gujarat. And they went through training uh, of uh, seven modules. And that training went for about uh, seven to eight months. And they learned about hydrogeologic concepts in their own language, on, in their own settings. They learned about mapping, water table monitoring, water quality monitoring. And uh, they became local champions. So once the training and they started monitoring, and they were the interface between the research team and the community. So whenever we were there, we went to the villages, they were there to talk about what they are doing and connect uh, the researchers with the village community or farmers. And they really felt empowered and valued because we treated them as uh, uh, colleagues or we are working together, learning from each other and like that. And so I want to say how it started. So when we had the first meeting uh, with about uh, 35, 40 researchers and the villagers in one of the villages in Rajasthan, uh, these few people, there, there were about 120 to 150 people in the big school hall and they really welcomed us. And then uh, we explained that uh, this uh, we have brought this project to help you with your groundwater issues. And they said, uh, okay, that's very good. Um, but we really don't need your research here. So that we were really taken aback and uh, asked, well, what do you mean? And they said, if you uh, have this funding, you give the money to us. So we will drill deeper and we can have more water because there is underground uh, river and um, there's plenty of water. So as we go deeper, there's more water. And we said, we can't do this, but we really want to understand and work with you. So they finally agreed, okay, now let's work together. And when these BJs started monitoring, so these BJs will go every Sunday in the morning to um, measure the groundwater levels and so these other villagers or well owners will ask them, um, what are you doing? Why are you doing? They will explain that uh, we are monitoring this groundwater. And they also didn't know uh, what uh, will be the value of their monitoring of groundwater level. And we were not sure how accurate their data will be. So it was a learning and was a uh, uncertainty of this, but uh, then, they kept uh, monitoring every week and then people after a few weeks the people the same farmers started asking um, what was my water level last week or what was my water level last month and then after seven eight months we had another forum in the same villages and uh, the whole conversation from giving us the money we go deeper to saying that uh, groundwater is not unlimited and water table fluctuates with the rainfall and we need to there's no unlimited water we need to manage this so that was the change by <coughs> engaging these bjs local people to monitor and communicate with the locals in their own language and in their own understanding so for example one of the bjs started explaining that the groundwater is uh, like uh, our mobile phone. And so if we don't recharge this mobile phone, the phone will become useless. And similarly, groundwater needs to be recharged and needs to be used uh, um, wisely. Otherwise, we will run out of this. So th that was the change by the engagement. So this example of how this uh, BJs went for training in their own settings about various things from mapping to um, land use and uh, planning for water in their language, their setting uh, at the very basic level. And so that was some done in classroom settings, some in the field 
and they really enjoyed and they felt empowered. So this is an example of uh, one classroom uh, here and that was in the uh, university in Udaipur and these people when I happened to be there and asked oh, well, what's your reflection and they said uh, we never thought we'll we will be in a classroom in a university. We never, we were primary school past people, but they really felt proud. Similarly, these uh, BJs working in the field, monitoring things, what this, this BJ in Gujarat uh, uh, marking the well, which they will be monitoring like that. And we had lots of meetings with the villagers, working with them and uh, trying to understand the issues. And uh, this is one of the uh, graphs of uh, water table fluctuation measured by one BJ in one of the villages. So uh, when after four or five months when we got all the data and we were plotting this data and when we saw the good pattern what is happening we were really surprised that their data can be reliable. This is another example of the water table fluctuation measured in one of the villages of about 25 wells. And it clearly shows the pattern, how it changes, and uh, from pre-monsoon to the post-monsoon. We also measure the check dams in the area. So because the check dams provide the groundwater recharge, and again, that uh, monitoring was done by uh, these BJs. And we also wanted to make sure that uh, they, they will do a good job uh, because uh, one of the uh, researchers was uh, doing PhD and she wanted to make sure that these data are uh, available and can be used for her PhD. So we gave them a mobile phone and so they, took the photograph of the reading, the gauge board, and also recorded. And when we analyzed those data and the photos, uh, their recording was about 98% whatever is on the picture. So what that shows is uh, these villagers can do, can collect good data if we support them, nurture them, and work with them. And we did uh, science, simple, simplified science based on this data and understood the water balance. And that is published in uh, international journals and like that. So what it means is we don't need to be very complicated. We can still use local data. We, we always don't have all the things we need in terms of resources, the background information, but we can work whatever we have, limited historical data or uh, limited resources. And this is a good, a good example of that we can do uh, and get insights and get uh, understanding what is happening. Now we collected so many data over last, uh, uh, in the first two, three years. And uh, so, we had 250 wells monitored in Rajasthan, 110 wells in Gujarat, and they are being monitored every week. So uh, you, you get a lot of data and how do you manage them? So we thought of uh, some centralized system. So we developed a uh, app called MyWell. And through that, these BJs or the BJ facilitator can help them to upload and other people can uh, visualize data in terms of what is happening in almost real time. So four things are important in managing groundwater at village level is the water level in the well, the amount of rainfall, water quality and check them water level. If we know all this we can have the groundwater balance understanding of the local village and we can develop village water security plan or help go this uh, panchayat to look into how they can uh, assist in this sort of thing. And what all this is leading to village groundwater cooperatives. So we already established uh, 
three cooperatives in Rajasthan and two in Gujarat. And the idea of these cooperatives is about 15 to 20 villagers, farmers who have the adjoining land get together and uh, they form this cooperative. And so in this case, they have been registered formally with the Rajasthan and Gujarat State Cooperative uh, Department. And uh, uh, they are still working and uh, developing in terms of the how to govern them, how to uh, share groundwater. So the idea is to recharge cooperatively and then these, these BGS can monitor groundwater and understand how much recharge has taken place during the monsoon and how they can plant together. So this idea came and we are working with it. But there were a lot of issues. So what were the key considerations for forming these village cooperatives? So there were about four or five steps. So, so the one of the points was they will, the farmers will not be worse off when they join the cooperatives. Uh, the second sort of uh, condition was they will not pump water more than what is recharged. And they will work on strategies to reduce groundwater demand and increase supplies through more recharge. And then we will work with the state government, state government or panchayat or other agencies to redirect their programs to support these cooperatives. And we need the ongoing support to, for them to succeed. So there were challenges in the beginning. So first thing was the convincing farmer to share and manage groundwater as a common resource was the hardest task. Farmer who have groundwater, why should I share? And how will it benefit me? These were the questions asked. And those who do not have groundwater, they are not clear as to what will they have to do to contribute for sharing to take place. And uh, in the same villages, some farmers are selling water to a neighbor farmer, but this is not the same thing as sharing and managing as a resource from the commons point of view. So these were the questions. And what convinced the farmers was that uh, uh, you have groundwater today in your well, but if your neighbor farmer drills deeper, your well will dry up. So what that will mean is you will, will not have this water. And that really uh, changed the conversation that uh, let's manage together and let's work out the, uh, how we can do this as a common pool resource. So the steps in implement is local ownership of the problem. Uh, that's very important. So that is coming through monitoring groundwater level by locals and creating the environment for meaningful dialogue on groundwater commons. So it's the working together and local ownership of the solution. That's very important. Uh, if you impose something on them, it doesn't work. But if we work with them and let them work out, but we become a facilitator, then it helps. And then at the same time, local implementation of the solution. So we, uh, the government programs can help, but I think we need to work with the local implementation uh, so the farmers feel that they, this is in their best interest and whatever comes to, on their way from other programs can be used, but they are the uh, actual actor and benefiter. So the, the journey of groundwater cooperatives, initially the farmer believed that they can drill deeper, they can access more water, and they didn't care about their neighbor's groundwater. That was the thing. The Marvi project and Bujal Jankars engaged the village communities. Farmer realized they are pumping from the same common pool resource. That was the change in thinking. And that came, that took about two, three years, really, this dialogue. And uh, when our when we went to the, these villages, uh, we will sit with them, we will sit on the floor with them and eat together their food and uh, work with them. So that was the change. And now even today, when last time I visited or many times I visited, 
they have developed a relationship. So for example, they will ask, uh, how is Peter, um, Peter Dillon from CSRO, or how is Roger or somebody? And that was the relationship developed. So, and it's an ongoing dialogue. And we'll just started working together, the concept of groundwater cooperatives was born. So this came, it was not instant. It was not in one year. It took uh, three, four years, five years, and working on an on, on, ongoing basis. So as I mentioned, we have uh, formed these cooperatives in principle. There's a lot of work to be done and a lot of hard issues to work out, but uh, we are working on pilot to operationalize. And uh, uh, we have developed resources for the farmers, BJ, schools, policymakers, MyWellF, for example, and we are developing some other tools, practical tools, which uh, we, at the village level we can use. And we also uh, worked in a group uh, with the women, with the men, understanding both issues. So often we ignore um, some stakeholders. And so that's, that's why we don't get a um, full solution, sustainable solution. So we try to understand what are the women issues in terms of water? What are the issues? How does groundwater impact on uh, education of uh, girls, for example, or women who have to fetch water from a uh, few kilometers sometimes, and uh, and how does that affect? And so we understood and we're working on these things as well, not just uh, groundwater. Is a, Groundwater is one of the inputs, but we need to work with people. So we moved from our simple idea of training of farmers and monitoring their wells and capacity to building for citizen science to self-realization means internalizing things, working from uh, sort of heart-like thing. And also, uh, we were able to engage farmers for social learning. So we didn't go to these villages as expert, but we went as a learner and worked learning collaboratively, learning to co collaborate in their own social settings. And also the realization that they needed to act in concert and to protect their own commons. So that was very important. The final point, groundwater commons can do better with effective practice of communication. And that comes through learning together and acting together, especially groundwater, which is an invisible resource. And we need to make this visible through monitoring, through dialogue, through working together. So in conclusion, a uh, complex problem often requires simple solutions. And this is very much true for groundwater management. The participatory village level part monitoring approach developed in Marwi can empower village communities and help develop their own groundwater dialogue, management dialogue and strategies. Communication about what is happening, what can be done, and how it can be done is the key with the common pool and invisible resource such as groundwater. And we need to develop and simplify groundwater science that can be used and understand, understood by farmers and implemented by government agencies. So that's very important. Um, otherwise, uh, things remain in papers and in books. And the, another learning was BGS can collect highly reliable information for groundwater level rainfall recharge estimation. And uh, BGS collected data can be used for communicating, communicating village scale groundwater balance analysis, modeling, and better understanding of what is happening. And villagers can find their solutions if they are supported and nurtured. And the, one of the highlights of what we have been doing for last eight years was the MOU signing between Marvi Partners and Jal Shakti Ministry in November last year. So that was a great uh, uh, sort of achievement for all the partners. And we have a number of publications and they are available through this website for more understanding 
and thank you very much for uh, this opportunity. Thank you, Maishwari ji, for a wonderful talk. Thank you. It was quite knowledgeable and uh, you are doing a great work with your team. Congratulations. Thank, thank you. So I'm happy to uh, receive any comments or uh, we Perfect. can have a, some sort of dialogue or discussion. Uh, I'm sure there would be a lot of questions to you. Oh, well, sir, uh, there are usual questions in our question answer section. So I'll be reading them out one by one for you. And uh, I hope uh, because uh, participants are still putting their queries in the question answer section. So I request participants to please put the queries in the question answer section and that too relevant. And I'll be addressing them. I'll be passing them on to Maheshwari sir and he will surely answer, right? So, uh, sir, the first question is, uh, uh, means from your side, are there any valid suggestions for reviving the rural economy of hills in Uttarakhand in the wake of people coming back in droves, uh, uh, in droves post COVID-19? Yeah, de de definitely. I think water is one of the important uh, inputs. And uh, I think if we can make water sort of available and re supplies reliable, uh, they can uh, start some agricultural, say, cash crops or things like that. And uh, that can really give them pride and work locally. So uh, this is something uh, also Professor Tej Pratavji also mentioned, the springs are drying up, for example. And uh, if we can, do something on how we can recharge and understand what is happening to these springs, for example. And this is one of the projects we have, uh, as which uh, GB Pant is leading uh, this spark project, uh, understanding the springs and re rejuvenation of springs. Yes, sure. We will plan a few things with you, and uh, we will surely do. Uh, uh, would like to do few things to. Uh, uh, increase the water level of our um, groundwater. Maishwariji, I think uh, this question uh, uh, will uh, raise a uh, kind of an opportunity for you as I see. The ground situation of uh, Uttarakhand is that uh, wherever the migration has taken place, uh, wherever uh, you see that uh, agriculture has been abundant, the real problem is the service water sources have dried up. So the challenge here would be because unlike in the plains, the uh, you know uh, digging a well becomes very difficult. But yes, uh, the thing that I discussed, the technological innovation of uh, uh, underground uh, check dams yes. to uh, see that uh, you revive a smaller uh, um, uh, spring source or that small uh, water source or uh, it's in a gomwala bhasha mein. But without water, nothing can be done. Yes. Definitely, excess use of water, like we do in plains, is not necessary in the hills. It is uh, water for critical times that you need. It comes. Uh, we can tap the rainwater source. Yes. Uh, rainfall will keep coming. There is uh, abundance of annually rain, uh, the water source that would be there. But then uh, we, it's not in our habit to conserve. Yes. Mountains may is how to harvest and reserve rainwater for critical times. Yes. If we have that kind of um, uh, you know um, uh, strategy or research strategy, how do you capture rainwater in different ways? How do you conserve it? Kaise karna hai? Usko, uh, uh, are you digging up a well then you are putting there or you are doing in a different ways but there, uh, there is hardly any work done down there spring water regeneration kafi at the kamyab hua hai but irrigation ke liye thoda jyada karna padega so uh, i think the re re recharge is very important yes uh, so if we can find local level recharge with uh, with the 
small effort of and it, it is uh, conditions are from village to village i don't think you and i can prescribe one thing fit all yeah. it has to be examined then a strategy for that area or village to devised and which research technology or uh, idea works there it's from really area to area the group of villages single kabhi kabhi to do gharon ke liye alag aur bakiyon ke liye alag sa karna padega sir actually very rightly said we need specific uh, designing of a system for the hilly areas and we can use some watershed or rooftop uh, water saving kind of thing during the rainy season so we can plan some specific things for hilly areas yeah definitely uh sir we have one more question uh so the question is participatory water management is a very Hello. Yes, sir. You are audible. Doctor Anjali Tiwari. Anjali okay. Tiwari. Uh, sir, uh, Dr. Anil Joshi from Kumaon University is a is putting a question to you. Sure. Hello. Hello. Uh, he is putting a question to you. Any valid suggestions for reviving the rural economy of hills of Uttarakhand in the wake of people coming back in those post COVID? yeah so uh, as i mentioned before uh, water is uh, one of the inputs so if uh, we can if we can provide uh, water access through recharge uh, and better management of water uh, and support for efficient irrigation uh, i think that can help uh, some of the people to grow uh, crops which will uh, help in the reviving rural economy so there are a lot of other things need to happen but water is one of the important inputs so if water is there and if other things can be organized um, we can certainly revive the economy and i think no one wants to leave their own place when if they can have the livelihood there and i think uh, it's within the with this uh, covid situation uh, many people have come back and we need to do something and water is one of the areas we need to work on okay uh, next uh, question is from uh, hydrology department great talk to professor basan i would like to ask what your view on quality issues in the area as regarding about 
professor what, Pasar, is, what you is your uh, yeah what is your what is your view of groundwater quality issue of india as we are in hub of multi pollutants so uh, if i understood correctly uh, you are asking about the groundwater quality in yeah, india yeah. yes please. so uh, groundwater quality uh, we we have done some study on water quality in two watersheds and i have understanding of the other areas and uh, so what we found was uh, fluoride is a big problem in the areas where we worked uh, arsenic is a serious problem in uh, west bengal in part of bihar and like that and also uh, salinity is a problem in many places and part of this is due to um, pumping uh, too much groundwater so as we go deeper uh, and we expose the aquifer rock to oxygen and other things um, the these some of these pollutants are mobilized and uh, can come to our groundwater supplies and drinking water supplies it, it can be a big issue also recently we have found that uh, from another study uh, uranium is a problem in some parts of uh, northern india and that that's very serious so uh, water quality is a big issue and once uh, if we due to the human activity if we pollute groundwater by industrial and pollution or some other reason uh, it's very hard to it takes long time and it's very expensive and maybe we can't do much once we pollute so uh, we need to be very careful about the groundwater quality it's like uh, say ganga river for example uh, pollution and similarly we can do the same harm or even more harm to groundwater so quality is very important and it's a serious issue for a country like india because of the all the pumping that has been happening and all the other activities uh, uh. hello yes uh professor bl sinha bl sinha can you hear me dr bl sinha please hello dr sinha okay audience dr sinha please uh sir shall i promote dr sinha to a panelist yeah 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 yes please hello uh, yes, sir it's a It's request not... from my side to dr sinha who uh, started the addressing is your raise and so the id and next uh... hello yes sir uh, professor jayanti patel professor jayanti patel from nit surat hello sir actually i'm able to see there usual participants so hello dr jayanti patel can you hear me dr sangeeta mishra last time is it
Hello. Hello. Uh, yes, sir. Dr. Swatantra Dubey. Dr. Swatantra yes, Dubey. Yes, sir. Wait, sir. Hello. Uh, yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Dr. Dubey? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you have some query? Yes, sir. Yeah, please. Uh, yes, sir. I have query regarding modeling. If the groundwater modeling is helpful for local people, the worry that project. Uh, so the modeling has a place in research and can help. But uh, what is required is the modeling that will help understanding at the for the practical intervention. So we need something which can be helpful to the farmers and can be, uh, the understanding can be easily translated at the farmer level with their intervention. So uh, we, when we started this project, uh, there were some modelers and I, I also have done a lot of modeling and I realized that uh, um, with all the assumptions we make and the um, the other uh, errors in the data and so on, by the time we come to the final conclusion of the modeling, um, there's no great deal of information sometimes, and especially it is true in groundwater. And so we opted for more participatory and then use that data to model it in a very um, basic way to understand how much is recharge, how much is the um, water available between uh, after the monsoon and so on. And that really explains. So we don't need uh, the numbers to a third decimal place. We need uh, enough understanding that uh, there is a uh, we have so much, broadly speaking, so much water available, and we can plan and make decisions. So modeling has a place, but to what level we go? That's the question. Uh, thank you. Next, please, Yogita. Sorry, Deepthi. Uh, yes, you. sir. Yeah, you please introduce yourself, please, audience. Next is the last uh, discussion. Next question. Uh, sir, I have unmuted um, uh, Mr. Shudhanshu Dikshit. Uh, so, if Shudhanshu Dikshit, uh, yes, sir. Dr. Shudhanshu Dikshit? Okay, he may not be Vishal. Uh, Hello. Uh, Subhanshu, you have any questions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Actually, yeah, uh, yes, actually, last year, sir, we are we are we have getting one project, a small project, that is uh, in Gujarat, that is related to check the well efficiency. Means uh, government has initiated lot of recharge well in different different part of the cities to recharge the excess rainwater. But uh, one major problem is there that how we can check the efficiency of that well means whether they are working or not. So, what are the uh, suggestions uh, from your side that we can that what are the techniques available that we can use in a very simple way to check the efficiencies of these wells? Is there any solution? Sure, thank you. You, you raised a very important question. So that, that is what has happened in most uh, or many government programs that so they build the check dams and, uh, uh, but they didn't follow off how effective or uh, what benefits it has given. Uh, rarely it is done. 
And so in the case you referred to, uh, if we can monitor groundwater level in, in that area, uh, just the water level, for example, how deep the water level is, um, say every month, for example, so before the monsoon and uh, then during the monsoon and after the monsoon. And if we do enough uh, uh, monitoring in enough, say, open wells or something like this, uh, that can give us uh, from year to year comparison and within the year. Uh, and if we do some areas where we are not doing any intervention like recharging, then you can see uh, what difference it makes. So that, that will be a simpler thing and uh, doesn't require any sophisticated equipment, just a simple measuring tape with a float and we note the reading. And uh, then with the, some analysis, we can do how much difference it has made. And uh, uh, also the rainfall, it is important to monitor so we understand what is the response of rainfall. And once you have several years of data, then it starts telling the story that, okay, this is how much it has influenced. So monitoring is very important and important in the sense that it gives you uh, satisfaction that it is working or not working and how can we change. And also it gives uh, confidence to government agencies, departments uh, that, okay, this thing works and uh, we can invest more or it gives confidence to local citizens about what they are doing and it inspires other people. So it's a very important area and that's how you can understand how effective it is. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, next, uh, last is Vishal Kandagale. Vishal. Hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear Hello, me, Vishal? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I, yes. Can, yeah, I yes. can hear you. Uh, do I have audible, yeah, please, please, Yeah, yeah. We are, you are audible. Please introduce yourself, please. Uh, sir, please. my name is Vishal, sir. I am from Tumkur, Karnataka. I am a research scholar from Sidganga Institute of Technology, sir. Uh, sir, my question is, uh, do I am audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, yes, you are audible. audible. Yes, you are. Audible, yeah. audible. Uh, uh, sir, right now in Karnataka, the many of the villages are dependent on groundwater only, sir. And uh, and uh, the major problem here is the fluoride contamination. Uh, 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 I am, uh, my question is, uh, the uh, recharge of groundwater is a uh, better solution for geogenic contamination. Because here uh, uh, in Karnataka, uh, there are a uh, large number of RO plants are there. Uh, we are using RO plants to uh, provide our drinking water. Again, uh, it, the, the concentration of fluoride in the reject RO is very high. Uh, uh, recharge of groundwater is a better option for geogenic contamination, sir? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, uh, if we can dilute uh, the stored groundwater through recharge, it certainly reduces the uh, fluoride content. And if we have enough recharge, then it can bring down to uh, acceptable level. So there is, uh, I think this is a better solution than say trying to remove uh, fluoride uh, by chemical means or some other RO or like that. Uh, if we can find a natural way, uh, that's much better. So recharge is a good idea and it can work if we do enough recharge because it freshens the groundwater and dilutes so thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, fluoride level. Uh, Dr. Narendra Jain. Uh, good morning, uh, sir. Uh, uh, I would like to ask a very simple question. Uh, uh, am I audible to you, sir? Yes, you are. Uh, sir, uh, as far as uh, uh, Rajasthan and Gujarat are concerned, uh, you have worked there. And uh, just I would like to know uh, what are the challenges that you have faced uh, 
uh, while recharging uh, those areas, Rajasthan as well as Gujarat? Uh, so, first thing is convincing farmers that uh, you can do recharge yourself because generally what is happening is uh, they will lobby the panchayat or watershed development department to construct a check dam for example and uh, uh, check dams are located where uh, people can influence the decision and, uh, most farmers uh, uh, are away from check dams so what we have done in last uh, three years, local level recharge, so collecting rainwater into a pit and then recharging into the well, nearby well. So um, right now, the government of Rajasthan has agreed to put more such uh, pits, uh, recharge pits. So they are about 50 cubic meter in size. And if we can have a uh, filling of this uh, check recharge pits seven to eight times during the monsoon, that will be about uh, um, 300 or more cubic meter of water. And that is enough to provide four or five irrigations for one bigger land. And that uh, pit takes uh, less than 3% of the area. And so we have demonstrated last monsoon, and now based on that experience, we are expanding this pilot and with more data and refinement. If this works, I think this is the way to recharge groundwater at a individual farmer level. So they don't have to depend on big dams or check dams but they can do themselves. They can look after themselves, maintain, and that they realize that what they do through this local level recharge benefits them. And it's, it is, if everyone does this, and especially in hard rock areas, uh, they get the benefit of it locally. But in alluvial areas, um, more, many more farmers have to do local level recharge, but in, uh, hard rock areas because of the fractures and uh, the water travel so much in, uh, compared to the uh, alluvial areas, uh, it is possible. So th that's how you can do. Uh, Dr. Swarnasha. Uh, Reshmi. <coughs> Dr. Reshmi, Dr. Suvarna Shah, please. Uh, now I think uh, we shall close the session. Uh, any other, hello? Uh, Dr. Sh Dr. Sharad Jain. Dr. Joshi, can you hear me, sir? Uh, okay, uh, thank you, Professor, for your. Uh, Dr. Joshi is Dr. Hinakshi Joshi or someone else? Hello. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, Dr. Hinakshi Joshi is over here. Dr. Minakshi Arora? Dr. Minakshi Arora. It's okay. Uh, okay fine, fine. Fine, sir. Thank you for your uh, nice uh, presentation. Uh, now, uh, I'm just... Uh, Kashyap, sir. Professor Kashyap. Professor Kashyap. 
Uh, sir, he is not here. Uh, sir, yes. let me make a call to Dr. Kashyap. Yeah, please, please, please. Yeah, please. Hello, Kashyap. Hello, Martha. Hello. Hello. So finally, uh, we shall uh, close to this uh, webinar. I think we took some extra time also uh, because of some uh, technical issues. So now, uh, once again, I am thanking uh, Professor Basant. Uh, for delivering his uh, webinar address from all the way uh, from uh, Western Sydney University, Australia. Thank you, sir, once again uh, for your uh, kind uh, permission and delivering our, addressing our, all the participants, both uh, nationally and internationally.